In this video, we review the surgical technique of penetrating keratoplasty, here performed in a young patient with advanced keratoconus with marked stromal thinning, and subepithelial corneal infiltrates causing significant visual impairment. Best visual acuity was 21 hundredths, and a corneal transplant was the only possible solution to restore vision. The significant overall thinning of the cornea and the absence of significant risk factors for graft rejection, led us to prefer the penetrating keratoplasty technique for this case. The donor cornea is prepared using the barren punch. We opted for 8 mm diameter for the donor and 7.75 mm for the host refine. This will ensure an adequate fit of the graft host junction. Now we perform the trephination of the host cornea using the Hesburgh Baron vacuum trephine. Note that each complete turn of the spokes advances 0.25 mm into the stroma. And this was a very thin cornea indeed. Only two complete turns were necessary to perforate into the anterior chamber. The vacuum should be immediately released and cohesive OVD is injected to fill the anterior chamber. Now the curved corneal scissors will be used to cut the pathological host cornea. This maneuver is carefully performed using both right and left sided scissors, taking care to avoid damaging the host stromal bed. During this open globe step it is important to keep stabilizing the interior chamber with OVD, as this will facilitate the cutting maneuvers and reduce the possibility of choroidal effusion. Now gently grab the donor cornea and place it in the trephined area in order to begin the first cardinal suture using the 10 nylon thread. Open globe time should be minimized, so in the first suture the priority is to quickly fixate the donor cornea. Ideally the curved needle should pass at about 80% stromal depth, but you will notice that the needle exited too posteriorly in the host side near the limbus. No problem as after reforming the interior chamber we will replace this suture. The second cardinal suture is now placed, directly opposite to the first. Notice that in this penetrating keratoplasty technique we will aim to place 16 interrupted sutures, always using a square knot following a 411 throw sequence to secure the knot. When tightening the knot the surgeon should aim for a firm apposition of the graft host interface. This is assessed by direct visualization of the interface junction. Also, pulling the thread slightly upwards facilitates the control of knot placement. Experience will of course contribute to a much improved correct suture technique. In this regard the Pollock corneal fixation forceps is a helpful ally in this step. We use it in all PKPs with interrupted sutures as it provides very good control of the graft, and the double tipped configuration provides indirect visual cues for correctly placing the subsequent sutures. Now that the graft is stabilized we will remake the first cardinal suture which was too posterior. Notice how with improved stability, the graft now beautifully approximates the host bed as the knot is tightened. Now it is important to rotate and bury the cardinal sutures, as this will create a reference for the subsequent placement of the additional three sutures per quadrant. For these additional sutures we follow the same 411 square knot technique. Notice that these sutures will be placed in pairs, with the second one being directly opposite to the first. In this step the surgeon may opt to bisect the quadrant and place two additional lateral sutures, or in this case we chose to progress with the interrupted sutures from the vertical axis towards the horizontal axis. There is a great debate among the preferred technique in order to decrease post-operative astigmatism. The current trend seems to favor a continuous double running suture or combined running and interrupted sutures. These are of course more challenging than the classic 16 interrupted suture technique and we feel that although the refractive result may be better, there is a greater risk for a single trauma to completely damage and obliviate the running suture. 
The main advantage of the interrupted suture technique, is that the surgeon may selectively remove the sutures guided by corneal topography, in order to optimize the end refractive result. Also in the case of any suture breaking it is only necessary to replace the damaged suture, therefore we favor the interrupted suture technique. We are now completing the core 16 sutures. Next it is of course necessary to rotate the knots towards the stroma. Subsequently we inject BSS into the anterior chamber in order to check for any possible leakage points due to suboptimal graft deposition. Indeed there was a single leakage point right next to the first cardinal suture. So we will reinforce this area with two additional interrupted sutures. Now we check the corneal astigmatism with the Meloni intraoperative keratometer, based in the Placido corneal ring principle. We verify that there is an expected against the rule astigmatism which is common in the PKP technique. The final step is to hydrate the stromal interface, further improving the graft host position. On first post-op day we see a clear cornea and a remarkable absence of intraocular inflammatory signs. The suture is tight and the anterior chamber is formed. Pendocam imaging shows a transparent donor cornea with that tight fit at the graft host junction. The high corneal astigmatism will decrease once suture removal begins in about 4 months, and so will the patient's vision markedly improve.